being the first panel of the day, I hope we don't let the audience down and make it super interesting for them. So uh, I would love to first of all begin with a short show of hands that, a quick show of hands, sorry, that how many of us have discovered new brands that we don't know of over e-commerce or quick commerce or digital mediums? Maybe with a show of hands, how many of us got to know about new brands via digital media? Just this much? Oh my god. I mean, of course, there should be more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, so um, a lot of people in the room kind of uh, explore new brands on that medium. Um, maybe I would love to begin with you, uh, Simran, that uh, how as a brand that is competing now, home care cleaning, digital uh, detergent business is something that's competing with the top masters in the market. Uh, how are you using digital e-commerce and quick commerce to kind of build the consumer trust and bridge the gap between you and the consumer? So obviously being a D2C brand, digital is really at the core and the heart and soul of everything that we do. Uh, my products are simple. I mean, we have coconut-based surfactants in our product and therefore our products are um, more safe uh, while being equally effective, uh, you know, for homes particularly who have pets, kids or those who have sensitivities. So it's not really the use of technology in our product formulations, but there onwards, after the product is made, uh, whether it is in consumer understanding, uh, whether it is in uh, customer service and retention marketing, so if somebody's bought it previously, after three weeks it's likely that it's over, therefore you're nudging the customer to buy it again. If somebody's chosen our dishwash, you can perhaps suggest that next time they could also try the detergent because it comes with the same natural goodness and promise. So then it, it's really about using technology in the other aspects, which is you know beyond the product formulation, so starting off with customer service, uh, a lot of retention marketing, uh, all of our communication is also digital, so uh, we do not spend on uh, TV and, and, and you know the the other media as of now. Uh, so obviously, we have been leveraging Google, Meta, Amazon, and all the other platforms that are available to get our message out there and to recruit the first 500 customers and the next 500 customers and so on and so forth. Um, and I think other than that. Um, the supply chain and ops, right? That's where uh, a ton of tech gets used because it's very vital to know which SKUs of yours are selling, how much they are selling, which are the cities which are pulsating with demand, um, what are the kind of lead times you have of delivery, because all of that impacts your conversion. So um, I think, you know, often we think of D2C as saying that tech powers D2C. The reality is D2C powers tech. Uh, the amount of tools that D2C founders and companies are eager to use, happy to use, experiment, iterate, is incredible. So I have previously worked in large companies and I can tell you that the adoption of some of the newer panels, tools, discussions is incredible. Like just this week we are signing up with a newer provider who can provide us, let's say, QCOM intelligence. It was not something that was available earlier. But as D2C brands, you're always sort of happy to put your hand up. And, and choose anything which gives you a competitive edge, right? And your competitive edge is going to lie in better understanding of your consumers uh, in faster iterations. Right. Uh, Natwa, from you, I would love to understand. Since yeah. your shoe, shoe is a category which is competing with all the Nikes and Adidas and New Balances of the world, uh, how are you using technology internally, not externally, internally, like she mentioned, supply chain and ops? How are you? making use of technology internally to compete with all of these uh, top masters in the market? Yeah, uh, so uh, if I talk about shoes, uh, it's a very complex category. Uh, there's a size, there are color, and it is a fast fashion, right? Uh, and it is like a lot due to social media and like uh, Gen Z demanding new fashion every like and the fashion changing every month. Yeah. We need to be on our toes to launch new product I think every month. So uh, I think before COVID we used to launch product on a season basis, right? Um, so like autumn winter planning or in summer planning. But after COVID what we have saw, uh, saw is like uh, consumer no longer want uh, season based planning, right? Uh, so the fashion is such uh, like it is evolving so fast that we need we need to launch new designs I think every month. So currently I think we are launching around four to five styles in different colors and sizes every month for that 
what we have done is like we have made a dedicated like a, a complete war room for a design house like we have an in-house designers who designs product and like every designs like first we used to do two three prototypes like making and reiterating the designs and those stuff so after like when we found out like uh, so there is a logistic challenge or there is an uh, like uh, making a prototype and making a development takes time so we have reduced those things and uh, recently we have also uh, like recently we have also developed a tool internally which analyzes the demand and we do a demand planning more effectively right Previous, like we have a large catalog, around 4,000 SKUs are there, right? So uh, every time there is one or one or more SKUs getting out of stock, and we are unable to plan those stock on time. So now what we have done is we have built a tool internally who con who could forecast the sales, like what uh, what the sales should be next month, basis of certain indicators that we have given it internally. So now, uh, like I think within a couple of months, we have like uh, we are very much like effectively able to plan our inventory. So I think in, uh, replicating the inventory, giving the purchase order, and making uh, stock in house on time, I think that is the main key factor that drives sales in our in our category. Right, makes sense. Kapil, coming to you, uh, like we were discussing backstage, power gummies, gummies as a whole being a category that requires a lot of consumer trust and I mean all of the others can also add to this because again detergents, toothpaste, shoes, all of these categories are such that uh, a consumer buys more than once during a short period. So the decision is of course impulsive, number one. But number two, there are options also. I can choose to have two detergents, three different toothpaste to try, right? It's it's. It's a category which can easily be substituted. So uh, in gummies for your case, uh, how are you gaining the consumer trust via technology? In Simple question. <laughs> and then maybe uh, one by one you all can add your per perspective as well. Can I give this uh, in a long format, uh, the answer of this question? So I think largely I'm also a consumer. You all are also consumer. We are all sitting as consumers. So. First of all, I think uh, leave consumer and put human first. Understand consumer is also human and humans understand communication. So let's forget about consumer as a jargon or rest of the jargons. Understand what you are trying to communicate. Even in our personal relationships, if communication is right, trust has been built in. Right? So whatever tool I am using or, what, or somebody else is using, Let's try to bifurcate into a small pieces of understanding. For example, if there are 60 students in a class, not every student will understand each and everything what a teacher is teaching on the blackboard. So uh, communication has to be a little tweaked. This is how small cohorts needs to be done. And on the basis of that, who understands what? Some, some people understand when first, some people understand why first, some people understand what. What, what is in me for first? And then we started uh, in, in the context of power gummies or in the context of any D2C brand. You are selling commodity, you are selling whatever you are selling. Right? So if you are communicating it right, I think communication is the key. Sort it out and for us it worked. And largely uh, whenever we, we are privatizing as well, I, I think I should largely announce this on this platform as well, that now your power gummies will be power you soon wherein we are uh, coming with other formats as well because uh, there was a lot of demand which is coming from consumers they were saying okay uh, you're gumming gummy gummies that's good but uh, i want in other formats as well why do not have this in other formats so that is the communication which is not we are doing that's the communication that they are also doing with us this is how i think uh, not i believe we have sorted and uh, use of a lot of mark tech use of a lot of uh, back-end RFM technologies, etc., etc. You want, I can talk about it, and it can go hours and hours. But in nutshell, layman's language, communication is the key. And that's the thing. Kapil, from an entrepreneur, so you suddenly became a love guru, like personal relationships, may <laughs> commitment and trust. <laughs> so I think th that's very important, you know. I mean, No, no, of course, I understand. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying it on a light. Because humans, you know, if we can't make things there, then what will we do with entrepreneurship? Makes sense. Wow, yeah. very deep. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe if you can, Drishti, add to this and then we'll move back to something on the same point. So, I think I agree with Kapil on the communication piece. 
on the tech piece i think there are two aspects of building trust right one is when you're launching you also sort of use a lot of technology at that point to understand what is also currently missing in the market uh, because that is what you also want to communicate to the user so i think there is a lot of tech that's that is used when we when you're starting the business and then constantly while you you're innovating on the product end because i feel as a d2c brand there are just two things that we are able to sort of uh, differentiate from other or legacy brands one is the communication of the marketing and the other is the product right because distribution etc is something that they anyways have a lot of uh, grip on so i think on both of those aspects uh, what you need to market comes from a lot of technology that you use to understand what is currently available in the market across different channels right so for for a certain channel like for for amazon maybe price will play a bigger factor versus for my website maybe the product colors would play a different uh, would play a more important uh, role in terms of the conversion rate so essentially understanding right even for the same product the kind of communication i would make on my website versus what i make on quick commerce versus what i make on marketplaces will be very very different or the sku sizes would be very very different so there is a lot of technology and a lot of tools that are available today in the market that would compare you with you know other legacy brands or other competitors in your categories that will help you essentially optimize your communication and your learnings that you can again sort of you know use to communicate and to you know market to the users so i think that is where a lot of technology uh, ev evolution has happened right uh, before i get to simran uh, i would love to know from shorya since you are the only one on the panel who handles multiple brands and can give us examples of the same uh, to talk about tech and to not talk about ai would be a sin yep. i would love to know from you uh, your best use case ai scenarios where d2c brands have been able to have a different edge because of their uh, effective use of ai for me personally i know the example of lenskart i know the example of nike try on makeup all of these things to make me feel like okay wow i don't need to go to the store mm -hmm. uh, i don't need to build consumer trust by phys uh, physically visiting the store i can make sure that everything suits me right in my bedroom and in, in my room in my comfort uh i would love to know from you what are your best use case scenarios where right. ai was involved sure so uh, when it comes to ai especially for um, the evolving day and age that we're in today mm -hmm. what we've noticed is that for platforms such as like you know your marketplace platforms and everything like that it's a very big black box for every one of us right uh, on marketplace much like your google facebook and websites you've not been able to kind of build a path to conversion you've never been able to see what's the impact of a banner ad which the amazon team will push for you guys but at the end of the day we all look at our roi so here is where we've used something called uh, amazon marketing cloud extensively across a lot of brands uh, especially noise is powered by that very heavily and for example campus shoes too uh, so over there you're able to create certain insights based on ai about what is the uh, what are the top 10 paths which are going to give you the highest roas so over here you're able to see that search only advertising is not the most incrementally uh, profitable path for you but then when you're adding an element of dsp into it and you're doing a little bit of 3b marketing into it that's where we're able to actually give that consolidated view that actually only say search ads are not the most impactful from an incremental roi standpoint mm -hmm. uh, beyond this uh, there's a lot of data in marketplace so what we've done again which has helped a lot of brands say um, more legacy brands who don't have that uh, cutting edge insight into performance marketing they're able to with a genie i just question their own data with hector and they're able to find out what's happening across their seller their vendor their amazon ad portal their flipkart portals and uh, yeah so these are the things that we've currently done and used um, so amc is a well of data i mean especially amazon has enabled that for us so that's where we have given brands the most edge as of today in my eyes okay perfect sim getting back to you uh, if you can share the same kind of scenario if you're using ai maybe for personalization maybe for any kind of technology internally or externally maybe please share the example so that everybody can learn yeah i think uh, for us i mean the use of ai is much more in our customer service which is uh, frankly um you know conversational bots ensuring that uh, some amount of the tickets which are raised the issues that may be coming up from customers are at the very least handled on time and then they are assigned to the right person so for us it's been much more about using it in crm um it has been uh, less about personalization you know so we 
have about 30 SKUs. So for me to kind of use this to create a personalized basket, uh, it is a bit far-fetched, you know. So, you know, if you bought this, now you will buy this. That is not AI. That is just looking at a cross-set uh, of data to say that people who buy dishwash are likely to buy detergents or people who buy five liters or something are potentially large families and therefore they're likely to buy five liters or something else. Those are first principles, logics that you can look at and refine. Uh, so for us, it's been much more about using it for CRM. We have also begun experimenting uh, using it for uh, content, both for uh, visual stuff. So we do try and uh, see if we can do some amount of product render creation, uh, product placements in lifestyle photographs at scale, at speed. Um, and uh, we also use it for content marketing very heavily. So I think, um, you know, gone are the days when you need four, five, six people sitting in your content marketing team. I think a lot of stuff is getting churned out today, uh, you know, with creative, intelligent prompts, uh, frankly, using AI. So that's what we are using it for today. But, you know, I'd just like to add on to that conversation. We were just having this rich conversation about tech, right? And I think. Yeah. We, we often like to think as D2C brands ki jo bhi e-commerce ya Qcom mein bikta hai, uska kuch data nahi aata, right? And, and obviously you don't have a customer information, you don't have a phone number, but there is a, still a treasure trove of data that does exist there, right? And, and it's really important to use it, AI or no AI, right? It's just really, really important to use it. As simple as saying that on your checkout uh, page, right, you know, the upsell or the cross-sell that you can do, right? But again, knowing very well that maybe the cross-sell that I do today is based on the information that I've got in the last six weeks. Six weeks later, that cross-sell may not be relevant, right? Because maybe seasons have changed. Um, maybe Diwali is coming up and therefore larger packs should be put up over there. So I think, you know, you have so many rich opportunities to drive up your order values, your attentions, uh, to drive up your cross and repeats. If you look at some of that data which is coming out, uh, even looking at some things like, even in, from Qcommerce perspective, you know, um, looking at trends which are very location specific, time specific, I think, uh, uh, I, I would imagine it will be true for toothpaste as well, right? A lot of purchase happens in the 6 to 10 a.m. You know, uh, but if you will not look at your data, you will probably keep your campaigns on the whole day. And then if you say that it's happening in 6 to 10 a.m. and then you forget about it, that's also wrong because you may then see that potentially maybe Bombay shops earlier than, um, you know, Delhi. So, so you have to look at it and keep refining it, you know, so it's not one end state. There's, there's many, many end states. Right. Uh, Nutbar, from you, I would love to know, Reaching tier two, tier three cities is as important as tier one, more important rather now, to reach every corner for a D2C brand. Uh, what, are, what are the strategies that you are using to reach every corner of the country and make sure that Bakabuki is a brand that everybody knows? Uh, so, uh, if I talk about uh, geographically sales, uh, in, uh, for our, in, in our category, I think most of our sales happens through tier one city or in state capital. Right, and that is where uh, the real audiences are, right? Uh, because uh, so what? Uh, uh, so basically, the first is identifying the users and identifying the geographical areas from where the sales is coming in. So in our case, I think uh, Maharashtra and Karnataka used to be, uh, I think, the topmost contributor in sales. I think one year back, but I think right now UP. Uttar Pradesh, even Northeast regions, even Jammu and Kashmir have increased a lot. Like uh, we are getting a lot of sales from these regions because even uh, even it changes seasonally in our case. Like if it is a if it is a winter time, then uh, in case of in winter boots, uh, sale increases men boots. So we get most of our sales through Northeast or in Himachal or Uttarakhand or this Jammu and Kashmir area. Whereas in, in case of in summer, uh, the more uh, if it is an open footwear, we get more sales through uh, like these uh, southern areas. Uh, overall, it is like mix and match thing. But uh, the thing is that how like uh, in case of in performance marketing, if I talk about we do in CT wise planning, like how. And the funds can be allocated towards in city and evolving one city, making an aggressively, like uh, making an 
add repeats right i think seven or more so that increases more visibility towards a particular city and then we move to an another city like those thing and uh, even uh, if i talk about in like atl advertisements on btl we do like most of like we do college events uh, uh, like on those remote areas like uh, on two uh, like tier 1 cities or tier 2 cities most of the college events or like uh, annual fest those are happening on we target on those stuff right uh we are left with the last five and a half minute or something i would love to come to the challenges part and maybe everybody can give two two minute on it quickly not two two minutes sorry <laughs> less than a minute so uh, maybe i would like like to start with you kapil and then shorya and then maybe we can take the round the challenges that you think are the most prevalent right now top two maybe you can mention and in the digital age for d2c's in india so the biggest challenge is uh, if i see look at the consumer cohort and try to divide and understand. We talk about largely tier one, tier two, in the terms of uh, geographically they are located. But when I really look at the data, there are a lot of, uh, for example, I take an example, civil line, it's, it's everywhere in, ev in every part of city, uh, every part of India, every city has a civil line. Now, in all those civil line, there are a lot of good consumers who are there. The first challenge is how to reach them still and uh, not to waste your money on advertisement or uh, not to waste your money on just CPCs. That is the current biggest challenge which we have and they are potential customers, very much potential customers who will be advocates after a, a summer period of six months or seven months. They're the first pot potential customers of that. So this is the current challenges which we have and we are trying to solve it. Sure, short and crisp. Um, adding on to Kapil, uh, uh, very, very uh, aptly, I think there's too much data today for D2C brands with the amount of data e-commerce is throwing at you. So prioritizing what is useful for you from day parting, as was rightly mentioned, and understanding what rules can be set up, those are things that tech brands will for sure help and something that we obviously offer. And beyond this contextuality, to add on to what was being said, is where the supply side op uh, optimization is actually the biggest struggle, I feel wherein today there are too many platforms that digitally are linked to DSPs. So finding out through impression-based tracking, URL impression tracking, knowing which server is actually impacting your consumer journey. These two things I think are the most pertinent kind of challenges which right. tech solves. Trish. Uh, I think uh, for D2C brands, the, like personally what I feel is data centralization because, uh, and again, it's an add-on to what Shora said that uh, today, if you're advertising or selling on five, six different platforms, to essentially understand, right, to basically make category-wise PNLs, product-wise PNLs, understand, you know, which product is, let's say, profitable for us at an entire business level, or probably, you know, so those kind of decision makings require a lot of data churning at the moment. So how can you automate that through tech and AI? I think that is um, a challenge that we're also internally trying to solve at the moment. But uh, or you know. Uh, even for your marketing efforts, right? if you've done especially uh, campaigns which are not conversion first campaigns, how do you sort of you know track uh, the Im the awareness that the campaign has brought across channels? So I think that centralization um, currently I feel is one challenge that we need to solve for. Simran? Yeah, I think uh, you know for us it's the fact that you know we've realized that there's a role performance marketing plays and then there's a role where brand marketing must kick in. But really, where are the uh, the consumers that I'm talking to, which is the modern millennial families? Uh, they're largely not watching TV anymore. So how do you even reach these people, right? And therefore, what is the branding playbook in the new digital ecosystem where people are watching CTV, people are watching OTT, just make koi ad nahi hai? How do you even reach these consumers, right? And then, of course, the fallout is ki CACs hai hai, CPMs hai hai, but the reality is, it's just very hard today to reach a millennial consumer. And it's getting harder and harder uh, because the where they're spending time, there are no ads. <laughs> Not what? Yeah, yeah. Common problem for all of us. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I think in our industry, the challenge is a little bit different. Uh, it is not on a marketing side, it is more on a supply side. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that is a good challenge to have, right? The thing is that, uh, I think there is a recent BIS announcement in footwear category that happened in the month of July. So, developing a product, a footwear 
in an Indian market is really a challenge. I think that, <laughs> that is what we are facing right now. So uh, there is a BIS uh, that uh, Government of India have implemented from the month of July 2024. So the import of uh, footwear is completely restricted now. So everything needs to be developed in India. And developing a footwear in India where the factories are uh, making traditionally and uh, not in an organized manner, that is really a challenge. Like to develop a good product in India based on the factories of India, uh, is a real challenge that we are facing. That is the one and the second is the supply thing that is also related to the manufacturing only. Like uh, maintaining uh, the product every time on the shelf, managing the out of stock thing. So that is, uh, I know that is a good problem to help but so that, that is the challenge that we, we are facing right now. Right. Uh, before we finish this conversation, a fun quick thing. Three words that a D2C should live by, three keywords, just three words in the digital age. Simran. <laughs> We can take our time. We have 30 seconds, so yeah. <laughs> Three words is a bit hard, but... Um, okay, one, one, maybe, okay. Let's keep it easy and quick. <laughs> okay, we can start from Drishti, <laughs> then we'll go back there. I'll tell Yeah. So first is con concentric consumer cohort, communication, data centralization. Three Cs, wow. Okay, sure. Uh, I was actually thinking of centralization too, not to steal from it, <laughs> but uh, that is one of the important <laughs> things. Uh, I think automation is very crucial for operational activities, which can be looked into from tech. So op automation is important. Okay. And uh, the second thing would be centralization. Third thing is um, analytics at a daily level rather than doing it at a weekly or a monthly. Right. right. Analytics is not good. So, uh, if I talk about specific to our industry, I think communicating right to the customers, uh, being honest to the customers and giving them a great experience, I think that is the main key, uh, that is, uh, I think that what Indian consumers expect. So, communication, this, trust and experiences. Yeah. yeah. And the second thing I would, I, I would also like to add on the value the utility in the product that you are giving to the consumer. Like, uh, so right. in our case, if we sell a product, the customer should feel like it is worth it. Like uh, the value uh, that is given to the customer over a product that is very important in a long term. So, yeah, Drishti and then Simran. I think one is analyze, second would be innovate slash personalize, and third would be, I think, uh, care for the customer. So I think those would Perfect. be three. Yeah, I think experiment, iterate, and then repeat. <laughs> Nice, nice mantra. Okay, uh, can we have one or two questions? Should we open the stage for questions? Uh, we don't have time for questions, unfortunately, so ah. we'll have to take them offline. Okay, perfect. All, the, right. all the spokespersons will be here around. We'll take the questions offline. Thank you so much. All everybody. right, thank you very thank much. You.